you know, my first hero, my first role model was my dad, Jim. He was a mechanic. He had this command of the physical world around us that just amazed me. He could make these complex mechanisms and machines interact with each other and behave in ways that just blew my mind. I remember watching him amazed as his fingers would, would dance over an engine as though he were conducting an orchestra. I was surprised, though. I was perplexed by the way that the adults around me acted towards my dad and, and the way that they reacted when they were told that he was a mechanic. Didn't they understand what that was? That, that he was the one that they could call when the most complex machine that they owned was broken and left them stranded, knowing full well that it would be in good hands with him because he was an expert at diagnosing and repairing every single little system within that complex machine. He was the one that they would pay happily at the same rate as their therapist, as their lawyer, as their doctor, and put no less the same faith in his skills and in his expertise. Yet, for some reason that I couldn't understand, his skills, his expertise, they just were not held in a high place of esteem or regard. I began thinking that there must be something inherently inferior about being a mechanic, that being a mechanic must be something that, that people would do when good, clean, desirable jobs were outside of their reach. I decided that for myself, I, I wanted something more than that. I started ranking the adults around me by the clothes that they wore to work or, or the way that they were addressed by their peers, the letters after their name, MD, ESQ, MBA, RN, BA, all the way down to my dad, Jim. He didn't even get a mister, just simply Jim. Entering high school, I was introduced to the wonderful world of shop class by our teacher, Phil Lemkow, and he blew my mind every single day. He connected the, the chemistry, the physics, the mathematics that we were learning in the classroom, all with the physical world around us. He taught me and, and taught anyone willing to listen just how much the world counted on those that understood the way that, that an electron flowed through a wire, or, or even just how a toilet flushed. I was surprised, though, again, because the school was just so nonchalant about what it was that he was teaching us. I, I don't mean to imply that, that what we gained from the 50, 60 hours that we spent on the scarlet letter was somehow not important. <laughs> But, but this guy over here, he was letting out all the secrets to how the world worked, and no one was paying any attention. It wasn't just in my little school, either. All across the country, shop classes like his were, were being shuttered and forgotten, retired with retiring shop teachers. The only real introduction to a career in the skilled trades had been removed from the curriculum. Through our words and through our actions as well, we have been teaching our children that careers in the skilled trades are to be settled for when all else fails them, rather than strived for. You know, I have a, I have a two-year-old son myself now, his name's David, and before too long, he's going to be looking to me for guidance about what to do with the productive part of his life and his path, and I want to make sure that what I pass on to him tells the whole story. Careers in the skilled trades are not just dirty, stinky, nasty jobs that nobody really wants, but that somebody has to do. Sure, the, the plumber that you call to fix your sink may show up with a, a little mud on his shoes, or he may, may get some water on the sleeve of his shirt as he's working, but with an average income up over $55,000 a year, that plumber is making the same as the average college graduate. Have you seen the inside of modern American manufacturing facilities? They have more in common with well-lit laboratories than they do the post-industrial revolution workhouse in your mind's eye. The manufacturing sector right now, today, has millions of open positions just waiting for the right candidates with the right skills and the right training to walk through their doors. I'm, I'm not trying to tell you that I think that 
colleges are bad. In fact, some of my best friends are college graduates. <laughs> a four-year degree is a prerequisite for some wonderful and some rewarding careers, and it's exactly the right choice to make for about a third of those that enter college. <laughs> but out of 10 students entering college this year, only three of them will both graduate and take a position that requires the degree that they have earned. A full five of those, half of those students, will feel the shame and the embarrassment of dropping out and find themselves making an average of $5,000 a year less per year than their high school classmates that never entered college. The last two of those 10 will graduate and then be unable to find a career using that degree that they have worked so hard and taken on so much debt to earn. We have created an educational system wherein the high schools are graduating students that are largely unprepared to enter the skilled trades, and that treats those in the career tech and vocational programs as second-class students that are unable to hack it academically in the real schools, we are shoveling our high school graduates into colleges, telling them to feel around and, and to grab a hold of something that they connect with or feel a passion for and, and take on just whatever debt is necessary to get through that program. We are leading our children to believe that if they apply themselves, if they really work hard, they will be able to find a wonderful and rewarding career doing whatever it is that they choose to do. Unfortunately, the workplace doesn't look at a, at a list of, of how many history majors are graduating this year and then create that number of historian jobs. <laughs> the workplace is crying out to us for skilled workers to, to build, to maintain, to manufacture our world. I think that it's important that we start listening to them. I think that it's time that we start encouraging our friends and our children to pursue those careers in the skilled trades, rather than settling for them. We must change the way that we think and the way that we teach our children to think about preparing for a career. We must teach them that a career in the skilled trades is clean, is wonderful, is rewarding, is well-paying, is stable, and is not beneath their station. We must push our schools to bring back those shop classes and to begin treating and teaching those skills with the same esteem, the same reverence that they garner in the workplace. We need to identify those corrosive stereotypes, those well-meaning prejudices within ourselves and begin supporting our children when they come to us and say, when I grow up, I want to be a mechanic. Thank you.